So let's have a look. Um, what do you think they would be interested in? It is certain that your viewers will be interested in military aircraft, sir. Anyway, let's see what we have. Okay, research, your viewer searches, and the first term is... Peter Zion? Otis, who's Peter Zion? He is an American geopolitics speaker, sir. Ah, okay. Okay, let's have a look. What's this gentleman doing? Wow, that's a lot of interest. It's actually beating the F-22, it's beating the F-35. I, I, I need to understand more. What will the world look like in five years? The end of the old world order? Geopolitics, innovation and deglobalization? Okay, let's see. Hmm, oh, that's interesting. Oh, come on. Really? No, yeah, that's a good idea. Cannot, this cannot be true, come on. China's decline, the Russian grab. He has been like this for a week. Oh, you're there. I watch all the videos on Peter Zion channel. I also read the, his last book about the end of the world that is just beginning. I read the accidental superpower and I watch from beginning to the end at least 15 long presentations. So I'm probably not the best expert on PZ's thoughts, but I think I got the main points. I think I'm understanding why he is so popular, or at least is so popular in the United States. He's telling a large part of the American public what they want to hear. The core of his message is that the end of globalization is now, and this is going to cause a deep global crisis that is going to last a few years. But the United States after this are going to come out on top because of their demographic structure and their economy that is not so so intertwined with the rest of the world economy. Russia and China, on the other hand, are going to crash and burn because of their demographic profile and other economic and geopolitical reasons, leaving the United States as the only superpower for decades in the future. If I were an American, an American from the United States, I, I would love to hear this. This is a very comforting and reassuring vision. No use to say I don't agree, because otherwise I wouldn't be here making this video. But I don't want to be misunderstood. PZ is extremely accurate and extremely informed. His data are factually correct. His interpretation of specific issues is often spot on. He is an excellent professional with years and years of experience, and I'm definitely not questioning that. It is the different cultural background that brings me to a radically different interpretation of the history of the world after World War II, which in turn is shedding a different light on the events of today. But I am not going into these details. Uh, this is not a geopolitics channel. Geopolitics is not my main area of expertise. However, Pizza has made some points about some of the world militaries, and I have something to say about that. On several occasions, even recently, PZ said that the Chinese Navy is not a blue water navy. And the reason for this is that, that several Chinese ships have a very limited range, so they are inherently defensive ships. Well, this was maybe true 20 years ago, but today I really don't understand where this is coming from. The range of modern Chinese ships is the same as other ships of the same category in service with other navies in other countries. For example, the estimated range of the Type 55 is 5,000 miles. The range of an Allied Burke destroyer is 4,400 miles. The range of a Chinese Type 52 destroyer is 4,500 miles, according to the most reliable estimates. The two classes, Type 55 and Type 52, number about 45 units, with four units being built right now as we speak, which is August 2022. So you can't classify them as a small core or modern ship in an otherwise defensive navy. 
They are basically the Chinese Navy mainstream. The Chinese Mobile Frigates, the Type 54, have a shorter range, but it is pretty much aligned with Western ships of the same displacement. But beyond the range of the ships, even more important for sustained and long-range operations is the capability of refueling at sea. The United States has the largest fleet in the world, but probably the Chinese fleet is number two. The Chinese fleet includes two large 45,000 tons of displacement supply ships, which are pretty much equivalent to the American supply class, plus there are 14 smaller vessels. And it seems that Chinese are going to build two more large ships in the near future. So I would say that China's supply capacity is pretty much proportioned to the current mission of the Chinese Navy, including long-range power projection. There are obviously other elements that make the Chinese lag behind the US Navy in terms of global power projection, but I think that they are doing pretty well when it comes to range. The Japanese Navy is the second in the world and it is a full blue water navy. And this is another common point that is made by PZ. Well, the Japanese Navy is indeed modern and very capable, but surely it is behind the Chinese Navy in numerical terms and it definitely doesn't have a full blue water projection capability like the Americans have. It is definitely a numerically strong navy, it has a lot of submarines, which is interesting, and potentially a lot is going to change when the F-35Bs are going to operate routinely from the two Izumos. These are going to become full-fledged light carriers, and we have already discussed on the channel the importance of this new type of carrier ship. I suggest you to watch the video, links above and below. In terms of blue water projection, though, the Japanese ship's range is pretty much average, aligned with the rest of the world, so there's nothing special to see here. The replenishment fleet, though, is quite small. There are just five vessels, none of them larger than 25,000 tons. Surely the Japanese at the top of their readiness can sustain at sea one or two or even three battle groups, but so can the UK, so can France. So yes, the Japanese Navy is an important force, but definitely doesn't have a global reach. China won't reach the technology level of the United States before 2080, and only if the United States stand still. This is another of the statements that I've heard from PZ. Okay, just staying on what is relevant in the military world. China, in this case, has the advantage of being the second mover. Just knowing what is possible and what has already been done is a great advantage. Usually the second one to develop autonomously a technology does it quicker. It's true that in the last few decades reverse engineering has grown more and more difficult, but it is still a viable practice that gives an advantage. This is enough to say that under current conditions there will be soon a time when China will catch up with the United States on everything relevant. But PZ believes that the process of China crashing and burning has already started. We'll see. The Chinese Communist Party has established the year 2040 as the milestone for reaching a world-class military capability. As a keen observer of the Chinese military, well, I think that they are well on their way and they are progressing to that objective. There are obviously still gaps, and today I want to speak about two gaps that are particularly relevant. One of the gaps is about the aircraft engine. I mean, high-performance engine for military aircraft. This is an example of a gap that has been closed very quickly by either acquiring technologies from abroad, by reverse engineering, or just indigenous development. The engines produced in China today are absolutely viable engines. There is a new generation in development in the West, but as for today, the Chinese have practically caught up. The most relevant gap, though, is in the 
semiconductor industry. This is extremely important because nowadays everything contains chips, everything contains semiconductors. China is already well versed in the low end of the market, but is also working feverishly to close the gaps and acquire control of all the other steps of the supply chain that are not currently available internally. This is a market with incredibly high barriers to entry because the semiconductor supply chain is incredibly sophisticated and complicated. In the world market, in each step of the supply chain, there are a few almost monopolists that pretty much control everything. The Chinese are trying to rebuild autonomously those key components, those key tools that are usually produced and provided by these big monopolists in the semiconductor supply chain. They are working to create their own versions to become self-sufficient. Generally, integrated circuits found in military applications are not at the technological edge of the industry. The MacBook that I used to write and edit this video is probably more sophisticated than almost anything that is available in any US weapon system today. Well, I think that US military will use MacBooks sometimes. What is not found in a MacBook though is that sort of dedicated, highly specialized, high speed hardware that is necessary every time some form of signal processing is required. Radars, sonars, uh, electronic warfare systems, they all require AD converters and DSPs that need to be very fast and reliable because they have to work at gigahertz frequencies. It's not like the audio stuff that you have in your stereo. This is the kind of high-end stuff that the United States can build domestically and China can't yet. This is probably the most important technology gap that exists today between China and the West. And the Chinese are well aware and they're working to fill it. It's definitely not a quick fix, but given enough time and given enough resources, I don't see why they couldn't get there. I have actually seen several analyses from a number of commentators, including PZ, that they seem to believe that a country which is not like the United States, which is not like the nation which is number one in the world, can't even get close to that level of technology sophistication. Well, they're usually wrong. Thank you very much for watching this video and a particular thanks to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member. I will never find a way to repay you enough for all your efforts. If you want to materially support the channel today, there's also another way you can buy a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage to no extra cost to you. We have discussed a lot on this channel about China, technology, aircraft carriers, naval aviation, and so on. If you're interested, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. If you click on these videos, you will show to YouTube that this is a channel with interesting content. And so it will be shown to other people that may be interested. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.